Hey man, how's it going today? I'm doing good, how are you? Pretty good. You and your love. Huh. Yeah, I'm going back. We what? never stop, eh? Yeah, anyways. Uh, today, the damage is that uh, we have a YouTube subscriber that mm -hmm. says your your file server is slow. Okay. Yeah, yeah your file server is not fast enough with the right speed and the read speed. So, you're not getting the ball so uh, the second? I think you have something to diagnose. We already checked the the, the pipe, the, the, the cards, the, how do you call it? The network cards okay, and the IPEF, and they are getting the full 10 gigabits. So it must be the encryption because when we are writing, the CPU is okay, going out to max capacity. So I think you should either turn off encryption or upgrade your, your processor. The RAM will not be a bottleneck because that is always okay. fast enough. It should so that while the RAM slow down an encryption process. So I think those were two options. But I know you would just like to keep encryption on because it seems like that is the default nowadays. You have Microsoft with BitLocker, and then you have um, Apple Firebolt. Android phones are being encrypted, iPhones are being encrypted by default, so then why not encrypt your file server as well? Um, I know you might be making it more difficult for you, worst case scenario, if you, if you let's say mess up your file server, but that's very unlikely to happen since you have your RAID 1 and then you have your two hotspots ready to go. But I think you should uh, look into get, getting off of the Xeon bronze processor you have and maybe go out to Xeon Gold, but don't go up to 8380 Xeon mm. uh, Platinum, don't need that. Power research. There's something with four, maybe four strong cores. I don't think we need more than anything more than that. That should mm -hmm. be enough. One good. You, you agree? Mm, okay. Well, I guess uh, we shall go with that then. I will see if I can find you. Uh, Zion Gold's processor. And Great, then sounds good. We'll go from there, okay? Enjoy your Bloomberg. I hope you don't start losing money again with trading. Be careful. Hey all, John here. Thanks for getting through the intro, and now I'm going to show you the back end. So, first we're going to do iPerf. We're going to test the network adapters and the Cat A cable that I have installed. Make sure that is good. And then from there, we're going to do a disk write test. So, that is the part where we're going to see where the CPU is basically getting pinned because of all the encryption going on. I could just turn off encryption, but it's like, then I have to create a new data set and I have to start over. I already have a lot of data on there, so I don't wanna go through that. So, let's get started. So, um, we're on the desktop. The first thing we're gonna do is check the MTU level. So, MTU is basically the packet size. So, as we can see, it's set to, where are you? 9,000. Um, by default, it sets around 1400, and I think at 1400, it maxes at around 7 gig. Um, per second. So now we have to check it on the other side on TrueNAS. So I'm going to drag that down. Let's see here. Boop, boop, boop. 10 100. I'm going to get my password pasted. There it is. So we're going to go into network settings and 9000 MTU, so that is set up correctly. Now we're gonna open up iPerf, so I'm gonna open up the shell. On this, we're gonna type in iPerf3-S, so it'll be in server mode, and then we have to into the terminal on the workstation, basically, iPerf3-C, typing the IP address of the NAS, so that'll be 1.1, and connected. And as you can see, I am hitting basically 10 gig. 9.90, so that's basically 10 gig. There's of course gonna be some overhead. Um, so that is great. So the network adapters and cables are more than good. So we have that out of the way. I'm gonna exit that. Um, let's open up uh, NetData. I know that TrueNestia has its own um, graphs, but I like watching these more, so. Let's get a 100 gig folder. So this has a lot of video files from, from a short music, uh, not music, uh, movie project I'm working on. 100 gigs, and we are gonna move that over to the NAS. As you can see, 10.100, 101. We're gonna paste that, and we're gonna watch the download speed. And let's see. So we're getting about 300 megs a second, uh, 10 gig 
it is supposed to be around 1200. Um, as we can see, of course, the data is coming in. Let me refresh you. Oh, this is the one time that it doesn't want to work. Um, inbound, we're getting two gigs in. All right, let's look at the other dashboards. Why the password update? Okay, we got one CPU core that's hitting eighty percent, ninety four percent. Okay. I'm gonna assume the CPU is the bottleneck here. This relies on uh, looks like AES, and I um, may not be on the CPU. It may be. Um, I'm gonna have, have to look into that. But one thing I do know for sure is that this CPU is gonna have the best single core performance. So if let's say we go to Google.com, we're gonna type in Xeon Bronze thirty one oh six pass mark. I really don't like benchmarks, but I'm gonna go with it, and then I'm gonna compare this. So my 12700K, it's going to be a world different um, in performance, but it's what it is. And then maybe we'll compare it to a laptop CPU. And then probably a Xeon Brown uh, Gold, Xeon Brown 61. Just so we get some benchmarks to get an idea. Alright, so the Xeon Brown has a benchmark score of 5769. Let's compare that to a laptop that from the current day, obviously a lot faster, way faster. Um, just a single thread is, what is it, three times faster? Yeah. My desktop, insane, four times faster than this thing. And a Xeon Gold from the same um, general, yeah, this is, this is basically the same general, um, how do you call it? Uh, I think this is first gen scalable, um, maybe second gen. Double the speed, single thread. So, and it has a lot more cores, obviously. I don't have that many, but yeah. All right, so you get the idea, benchmarks, whatever. Um, let's get this in practice and see if there's actually a performance difference. So as you can see, it's still copying. What is our speed? Stuck at 300 microsecond. It's, again, the encryption that's going on. So I'm gonna show you that on the back end, how I have that configured. If I remember how to get the... So we are copying to an SSD, and as you can see, ZFS is enabled, and we're using 256 GCM. So obviously it's being encrypted. Everything on this uh, NAS is being encrypted, by the way, except for this, but that can be encrypted, so it's like, yeah, for things that are just running on one gig, there's really no performance hit, but as soon as you start going faster than that, then obviously you start seeing stuff. So, let's get that file transfer stopped. I mean, this is a pretty decent speed, but you want something a lot faster if you're doing good editing. And there it is, 98, 99%, 100%, it's pinned up there. Um, we're gonna stop this transfer. And we're going to delete permanently. Cool. That is done. It's probably going to keep writing stuff to RAM and it, as we can see, CPU usage is down. So that's good. All right, let's shut this guy down and we're going to get that CPU installed. Let's get it. Welcome back. Um, we installed the Xeon Gold 5122 processor. That's still first gen scalable, so processors are still really cheap for the LGA 3647 socket. I installed that. Um, we're going to test iPerf even though I did it already on the old um, processor uh, just to make sure there's no performance difference. going to kill that ping. Hop back into the shell and we are going to do iPerf 3 S. Alright, iPerf 3. Dash C 10.100.1.1 connect them 
Still gain the same 10 gig. Kill that connection, exit, exit. Um, and now we are going to get the movie footage movie. So that's 100 gigs. Copying from the desktop over to current projects. Letting that run. I think we are at 300 megs per second before. We're gonna move that to the side. This over to the right, uh, left and right, okay. And CPU usage, we're gonna check that out. We are at lower usage per core. Oh, we get 75%, okay, I did that. But we're getting double the speed. So, um, my theory is that if you get a much newer processor, go second or third gen Xeon scalable, they'll be much better with encryption. Encryption is the bottleneck in this case. If I didn't have encryption, I would be getting the full 1200 uh, megabytes per second um, for writes. Um, so I may consider moving either to, probably either turning off encryption or moving to a new machine. Probably just turn off encryption for now, but then again, I don't want to have to move stuff around. Um, so I'm most likely going to leave it as is and refresh this just so I know it's actually working. Five gigabit coming in. Yep, it is CPU that's limiting it because we got double the speed by upgrading it to, an, to a more powerful system. All right, almost done with the copy here. We'll test this on Windows as well just to make sure I'm getting the same 600 megs per second. Um, I just know that the drivers on Windows are kind of sketch for the, for the network card I have. Uh, let's see, 24 seconds left. That's not bad. This is basically setup performance I'm getting from these uh, NVMe drives, plus the redundancy and encryption, which I don't, I don't really need encryption for drives like this, but it's already on. So let's see. Two, one, done. Nice. We're going to copy this, which is already sitting. We're copying that to the desktop. And that's going to fill up my storage, isn't it? Okay, so we're getting 500 in and out. Five, not 500, basically 600 in and out. So half the speed. Um, yeah, I think that's still doable. Um, encryption, if I turn that off, I'll be good. So that's on me. But again, I have the redundancy on that, so. All right. We have solved the problem. We are good to go. I'm gonna check this out on Windows as well. And let me delete this test footage because we already that's basically a duplicate. And we will delete this from the Linux desktop as well. Boom. Good to go. Let's get on Windows and see how this goes. All right. All right, we are back on Windows now. So let's see if we can get some of this stuff copied to the desktop. Hopefully I have enough space. Yes, I do. Copy. Oh. Windows is doing it. One gig. I gotta make sure this is real. 10 gig. The first time I tried this um, before I switched the processor over, it actually was not doing this at all. So it's going, wow. All right, uh, we're gonna test iperf on Windows and see what happens. Um, I'm gonna show you my configuration settings I haven't changed much on here. Sorry, I just clicked the wrong button. On Windows, other than jumble packets. So we're gonna go into the network, properties, configure, advanced, jumbo packets, nine, yep, basically 9,000. That's about it, that's all I changed.
but again I'm copying from the NAS so this might already be at um, it's already it might already be encrypted so we're gonna copy stuff over to it and see what happens there yeah this is moving okay let's retest um, do I have anything else that I want to copy? That's, jeez. Transcoded footage. Yep, let's drop that off. Um, this is going on to the SSD. Yep, guys, we did it. We did it. All right, so let's go into KeePass. I'm going to see if I can get into my NAS. Um, let's get this guy set up. Come on. So now Windows is slow. Now, now Windows is faster than Linux. It was the other case uh, before. Uh, let's see. One gig. CPU usage, 54%, and network is definitely 10 gig. Processor, processor, processor. Um, also, the difference between Linux and my Windows setup is that uh, Linux is running over SF SFTP, if that makes a difference, versus SMB on the Windows side. Um, so that is another thing to factor in. Um, it could be that um, FTP is more of a single thread and that was the problem versus SMB, which is multi-threaded. Um, don't quote me on anything I just said, but that could be part of it. All right, cool. We got that done. I'm gonna delete these files, make sure I, yep, they're still there, delete. And we're gonna start iperf. Um, I may even show you the previous iperf three dash s. Oops, not, I want a dash on an equal. Cmd. Um, and then go to not that. I can actually delete the crystal disk mark. I'm not using that at all. Don't judge me. All right, so this will be dash C, 10, dot 100, dot 1, dot 1, right? Yeah. See this? This is this is weird. So it says it's only getting 4 gigabits per second. Um, if this run this again. Yep, 4 out of 10. So this was confusing before on Windows. It's not saying 10 gig. I don't know why. Maybe it's doing bi-directional. If it's doing bi-directional, that makes sense. Four and four, and you're getting almost close to 10 gig, but. All right, well, thanks for watching. Um, stay tuned for the next video, and please subscribe if you haven't already.